Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys about something you don't really see other people talking about on YouTube, even when they talk about the whole uh, aesthetics thing from a classic physique perspective, and that's that a lot of the guys from that era actually put a heavier focus on their overhead pressing than they did their bench press. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing. Work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And you know, this is going to come as a surprise, because guys, I don't normally talk a lot about the aesthetics thing. Uh, but I think it is fair to say that modern bodybuilding has gone in a direction to where nobody looks aesthetic. Uh, they don't look aesthetic at all. If you're going to use that term, the term meaning beautiful or attractive, hell no, they don't. It's a freak show. Uh, but, and it's going to be a surprise for a lot of people for me having a powerlifting background to stand there and actually say, uh, the overhead press, if you're looking for that sort of classic look, uh, like the Apollyon type look. Guy, the guys like Steve Reeves had, uh, you know, guys from that era, then the bench press probably isn't your best choice. And it's not because the bench press doesn't build a huge chest. That's a myth. The bench press can build a massive chest. Uh, that's where we get into the problem. And you know what? Someone who talks about this a lot, again, surprisingly enough, Jamie Lewis uh, writes over the Chaos and Pain blog, came in from other strength sports and decided he was just going to set world records in powerlifting. Uh, and his first year in powerlifting, he set world records. He feels the same way. He didn't like the bench press. He honestly feels when he makes fun of, of the way bodybuilding has gone, his opinion, uh, as someone who's been around this game for decades also, is that Joe Weider started the whole massive pec thing. And it's because Joe Weider is well known in most circles for having had a muscle fetish. Um, Joe Fe Weider had a fetish for male bodybuilders. And he wanted them to... Be, look a little more feminine, so he really focused upon expecting chest to be disproportionately large, or pectorals to be disproportionately large, and a massive underhanging edge of the pec, just like breasts. Uh, but you know, they could still be ripped and lean, but still have basically breasts. And that wasn't the case before Joe Weider came in and took over all of that and pushed that idea. Um, having massive lower pecs wasn't something that was promoted in that world. All right, it wasn't something that was promoted in that world. Uh, overhead pressing was more popular and I mean standing presses behind the neck presses everything and the reason is when you think about the the classic look and you go back and look at these Greek statues things like that they have broad shoulders it's broad shoulders that are the defining characteristic in fact broad shoulders are considered to be a defining male characteristic if we're going to talk about what muscle groups define us as masculine it's our whole shoulder girdle wide shoulders, broad shoulders. You know, that's always when you look back, that's what women looked at back in the days. They cared about a man with broad shoulders, okay? They cared about shoulders more than arms because shoulders are more important for masculinity. And there's a whole evolutionary reason for that. Uh, a lot of anthropologists and stuff have looked at that. Uh, and that seems to be part of the reason that testosterone and other androgens affect the shoulders more than a lot of other muscles. It's so that, uh, group of men could be seen from a distance. Another tribe could see them off in the distance and know that their men were, were manly and big if they had broad shoulders. So it became a deterrent that it was something you could see at long distance without having to get close. Oh man, the size of their shoulders. Uh, and so it seems to be an evolutionary reason as a definition of masculinity, all right? Uh, not pectorals. And so, you know, Jamie Lewis has talked about that a bit, and it's really the whole focus on chess is really has to do with Joe Weider's kind of focus on uh, his sexual fetish uh, involving male bodybuilders. Uh, but the reality is the classic look is based more upon having broad shoulders, a nice wide upper back, broad shoulders, well-developed delts, okay, well-developed shoulder girdle, and then maybe your whole upper chest. Because, again, the upper chest is affected more by androgens. Uh, than the lower chest. Uh, well, what exercise builds all that up? Overhead pressing. Overhead pressing. And as Jamie always pointed out, the overhead press is overall more useful, meaning a standing press has far more carryover to sports, athleticism, everything else than the bench press does. Bench press is a good exercise. I'm not knocking the bench press. But if a person wanted to focus upon having that classic, uh, the, the masculine classic look, nothing defines that more than, than broad shoulders. And even guys are like, well, what about arms? Uh, triceps make up two thirds, two thirds of your upper arm. Uh, you can maximally develop your triceps with overhead pressing. People say, what do you mean? Well, 
three heads to the tricep, right? Lateral, medial, long head. Long head's the biggest one. The long head gets the least work out of the three heads when you're doing any sort of chest press. Overhead pressing, coincidentally, works the long head more. Uh, not saying it works at more than the other two, but it works at a more proportionate amount. So if you wanted a proportionate tricep, which is going to make your arms look bigger from the side, right? More proportionate tricep overhead pressing helps more. So the overhead press also builds the upper chest, all right? Overhead pressing builds the upper chest to a much larger degree than it does the lower chest. And incidentally, uh, if you look at people who are very strong overhead pressers, look at a lot of Olympic lifters out there, ones who are fairly muscular, all they do is overhead pressing. There's tons of them that don't actually do what you would think of as direct chest work, right? And a lot of them still have decent pectorals. Now, they don't have that bodybuilder pectoral look, but if you look at them, their pectorals are developed. Their pectorals are developed, and how are they developed? From all the overhead work they do. Heavy overhead work will build your chest, particularly the upper chest. Well, if you're looking for that classic look and you're not looking for that saggy tit look, uh, the comic book character look, overhead pressing is going to give you those big shoulders. It's going to build your upper chest up here more, right? The upper part of the chest. It's going to build your triceps really and potentially better than some other types of pressing will because of the little more work on the long head. So overall, if you're looking for that classic look, the overhead press is going to give you more. Now, as far as it being overall more useful, of course it's more useful, particularly standing presses. Standing presses are one of the most athletic lifts you can do, and I don't, not specify in one type, I'm not saying a strict press, push press, behind the neck press, whatever, dumbbell overhead press. Overhead pressing, particularly standing overhead pressing, is very athletic, has a lot of carryover, all right? It's a full body exercise in a way. It helps develop your core, even helps develop your upper back, develops your entire shoulder girdle. But it trains you to press and push things while using your whole body, while bracing your core, right? That makes it a very useful exercise for anyone who's going to compete in a sport. Uh, and that includes things like football, rugby, everything else, because when you push someone out on a playing field, are you pushing them like this, or are you pushing them in a lower position? Uh, same thing with a lot of boxers. Uh, arguably, the incline would probably be dramatically better than the bench press for most boxers if you look at the angle most of them punch at. But overhead pressing does too, because overhead pressing allows you the ability to use leg drive, allows you to do push presses. Uh, who's going to be able to hit harder? Someone who's able to activate their shoulder and tricep and everything while using hip drive and leg drive, or someone who's used to doing it without using hip drive and leg drive. Uh, it's going to carry over better to a punch. So for boxers, MMA fighters, things like that, overhead pressing is more useful. So for various types of contact sport athletes, the overhead press is a more valuable exercise. It means it carries over better to other activities. Uh, the overhead press really is all around more useful. And I'm not telling people not to bench press. Remember guys, I've competed in powerlifting. I mean, I've done the bench press competitively. But if you really want to look at it from an athletic perspective, hell, even the aesthetic perspective that everyone talks about and worries about all these young guys today, overhead press is going to do more for you. Uh, as, a, as a chest and shoulder exercise, it's going to be dramatically superior than the bench press for you because it's not going to give you that massive, saggy pec look. Because if people are chasing aesthetics, it's not what you want. You still see guys like that. Uh, you still see some guys even on YouTube like that who really their pectorals are overdeveloped. They're overdeveloped for the rest of their upper body. And uh, that's not necessarily a good masculine look. And it's not the classic look that people are thinking of. When you think of the classic Greek statues, uh, you see any of those with overdeveloped pectorals? No. That's your classic look right there. All right, that's your classic look, the Greek statues. And that's what a lot of the guys from the golden era modded themselves after. These guys were focused upon form over function and that's what they ended up developing was that sort of look because they focused upon can I be strong can I be athletic and then I should look the way that I perform they didn't always necessarily focus upon how am I going to look it's like how can I perform and then we'll see how the body looks as a result because that's where those Greek statues came from those came from strong fit athletic men right that's that's where they got those statues 
the athletes of their eras, the physically active people. And they carved the statues out of them because that's what they thought a body should look like. And that's what gives that classic look. And you're going to get that look by focusing a lot more on the overhead press than you are on various chest pressing of any type. And certainly more than focusing on flies or anything like that. Uh, so just food for thought, just something I'd throw out there. And believe me guys, you can still develop your chest off of overhead pressing. Uh, there's no reason to think that you're not going to have any pecs at all if you get really strong on the overhead press, because I promise that you will. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.